For so many years, we've noticed how people with autism can relate to puppetry. There's this really special relationship, and we've never known why. We hear uh, from parents and caregivers often about how they decided to try to use puppets to reach their kids. I want to play with you some more. We think it's a really interesting phenomenon, but there didn't seem to be any research that actually made a connection between puppets and autism. Puppets are a very interesting medium. They can be tremendously expressive, communicative, empathetic, and joyful. Puppets are so accessible. Anything can be a puppet, really. I mean, get some googly eyes and put it on a wooden spoon and you have a puppet. The puppet can have an emotional life. The puppet can involve you in what they're doing without you having to try to figure out the human being behind the puppet. Puppets occupy this very uh, interesting space between a very complex and often demanding social environment and that make-believe world where everything is possible. I come from a puppeteering family. I'm one of Jim and Jane Henson's five children. I'm an advocate for puppetry, and I believe in puppetry as a medium to reach all different kinds of people. I work with Cheryl Henson, and she had started these conversations with Yale Child Study Center. Now, even though we knew that puppets could be quite interesting as interactive partners for children with autism, there haven't been any studies that actually documented the potential benefits. You know, typically babies preferentially orient to people who talk to them, who speak. And it gives them a tremendous advantage because once they attend to the speaker's face, uh, they can better process language. And we know from prior studies that children with autism have a particular vulnerability in this area, meaning when people start talking to them and, and engaging them using eye contact and speech, they tend to look less. So in our study, we targeted something very simple, which is a preference for a speaker. We came up to New Haven and shot some videos for Cassia. She and her team had come up with some wonderful ideas of what they'd like to test. We wanted to make sure to provide the footage that would be needed so it could be replicable uh, for the eye tracking software that they were going to be using. So we were trying a lot of different things. I was there to um, be a part of performing it. Hi, I'm Z. Hi, I'm Violet. How are you today, Violet? I am okay. So we recorded a really fun video in which a person and a puppet engage in this sort of back and forth conversation. And it was very fun, it was very animated, and from time to time they would look to the camera as if trying to engage the child in that conversation as well. And so you have a human, a puppet and a ball. So they're able to test whether or not the children were looking at the human, the puppet, or the ball. And it became a very clear determiner of where the attention was going. We recorded their eye movements very carefully, tried to understand how much time they pay attention to the speaker when the speaker was a person versus the puppet. As we expected, children with autism did not really pay a lot of attention to Z to the person who was speaking. But they paid a lot of attention and preferred to look at the puppet speaker. Why? Why is this? And even with this study, we still don't have any idea of why. We can conjecture, we can imagine it might have to do with the complexity of the human face. I think what the next steps could be in, in science is to further investigate whether inclusion of puppets in a therapeutic process actually enhances learning. And the second step is what is special about puppets that make them more engaging for kids with autism? We don't know what kind of features are, are most important. My hope is that when we go into a classroom or therapy setting that there's a puppet there. 
There's so many of these different markers that we can be working towards when using puppets, whether it's role playing, modeling, de-escalation, emotional regulation, impulse control. We don't really know where this research will go. We're really hoping that other people will pick it up and will explore puppetry and will find ways to use puppets in their interactions with kids on the autism spectrum.